Peaceful Mind, Healthy Body Week 2 is around the corner. And uh, I know we are um, just about to finish week one. And I just want to let you know I'm proud of you. Um, I know it is not easy to be adding some of these things. And um, as this progresses, it's not going to get any easier. And I also want to remind you that where you are is absolutely perfect. Um, you are exactly where you are supposed to be. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. Don't be hard on yourself. Don't look at what you could have or should have done because where you are is the perfect spot on your journey to health and wellness. And remember that this is about progress, not perfection. I want you to write that down again. Progress, not perfection. Okay. So our objective is to be gentle and kind. I want you to write that down. Gentle and kind. I want to remind you that change doesn't happen by us willing it into existence. It happens by building up habits in our mind. And slowly we form new uh, neural pathways in our brains until we're doing things differently and effortlessly. And I want you to realize that eventually uh, this wellness life will become effortless for you as you build these healthy habits. And that's what we're doing right now is we're building what I call our wellness muscles. You know, think of muscles that you haven't really used very much. Uh, they're weak at first and they might get sore at first and it hurts, but it feels good at the same time. And you're going to experience that over the next couple of weeks. But once we build those muscles, they're going to be nice and lean and you're going to feel fantastic. Um, so again, progress, not perfection. What I want to do is I want to take a minute and just celebrate last week's success. I want you to think about, you know, what did I do well last week? What am I proud of myself for last week? What are new habits that I'm already seeing are starting to form since I've started this? And what can I learn? You know, where am I beating myself up that I can take it and learn from? Now, this week is about swapping. So we're going to keep doing week one. We're going to keep doing the greens. Can you do greens three times a day? We're going to keep doing the water. Can you drink at least half your body water, body weight in ounces every single day? We're going to keep doing the self-care, especially one spiritual act per day. And we're going to keep playing every day if we can, at least five or six days a week uh, would be the objective. And we're going to keep tracking sleep. We're going to keep tracking the bowel movement. So those are things that we want to continue, okay? But now what we're going to do is we're going to swap. And we're going to swap two different categories. We're going to swap what we feed our minds and what we feed our bodies. So what we feed our minds and what we feed our bodies. So we're going to take the junk out and we're going to let the abundance in. This week really is about mindfulness. We're going to pay attention. We're going to do some detective work and learn how to listen to our body and honor it for what it is because it is God's temple. God created and gave us this body and he is trusting us to be good stewards of this body and to take care of it and to honor it as if it is his temple like the Bible says. So we're going to do that with what we eat. Here's the theme. If it grows on a plant, we eat it. If it grows in a plant, we treat it like the garbage that it is. And I know that sounds aggressive, but I want to say that again. If it grows on a plant, we eat it. It's great. If it grows in a plant, we treat it like the garbage that it is. So to simplify this, we've come up with three categories for food specifically. The first category is what we're calling crap food. Crap. C-R-A-P. Crap foods. The crap stands for chemical removes body's nutrients, addictive and processed. So crap foods are the things that are chemicals. They're not real food. They actually remove the body's nutrients. They're addictive. They leave us feeling more hungry. They, feel us they leave us addicted and needing more, and they are processed. Um... It doesn't fill us. These are the foods that don't fill us, which is why we, we feel like we're so hungry all the time. It actually makes us more hungry. Think about um, a pill that somebody takes to help their appetite shrink. When we eat crap foods, it actually helps our appetite increase. It makes us more and more and more hungry. Think of a drug addict, right? They know it's bad. 
cocaine or heroin or whatever, but they can't stop. They need more and their tolerance builds. So they need even more and more and more and more and they're just destroying their body. We do the same thing by eating the crap foods. It's literally poison. It adds toxins. It burdens our bodies. It's not digestible. It's not pure and it hinders our health. And I want you to realize the average American consumes 10 pounds of chemical additives every single year. 10 pounds of chemical additives every single year without even realizing it by being mindless with, the, with what they feed their body. So we're going to be mindful. Processed, chemicalized junk food is what's listed under, my, under crap food. So we have a list. You probably have it in front of you because we asked you to print it out. And the crap foods under that is the processed, chemicalized junk food. Guys, read the ingredients. You can tell if it's a chemical because you can't read it. You can't pronounce it. You don't know what it says. If you can't read it, you can't eat it. That's our rule of thumb. Okay, if I can't pronounce what this is, I probably should not put it in my body or my children's body or my loved one's bodies. Sugar is the other category or artificial sweeteners or high fructose corn syrup. And here's what I'll tell you. It's sad to say, but everything we eat is laced with sugar and sugar is a chemical. By the way, heroin is a chemical. In fact, sugar is made very similar to the way that heroin is made, except sugar is actually more addictive. And I also want you to realize that the human body and the human brain cannot handle processed sugar. We're not designed to eat these types of food. So the, the brain and the body does not know what to do with it. Sugar will actually limit you from losing weight. It'll give you the highs and the lows. The, a lot of the emotions come from sugar. Um, what sugar does is the sugar molecules abnormally attach to cells in the body, and it causes an acceleration in the aging. It ages your eyes, your brain, your nervous system. It actually, by eating sugar, you're aging faster. You're putting on maybe the anti-aging cream. <laughs> You're defeating all of that because you're by putting sugar in your body. It causes use overgrowth, mood swings, and it biggest thing is it never satisfies. Never ever satisfies. So we always crave more. It becomes an addiction. It actually um, makes you more hungry versus when you eat real food, it actually signals to your body that you're satisfied. And the sugar converts directly to fat. It makes us sick. Think about cold and flu season. What is cold and flu season? January, February, right around now. Why? What do people do for two months from Thanksgiving through the new year? Eat a bunch of sugar. Eat a bunch of crap foods. Our bodies are not made to handle any more than six to nine teaspoons of sugar per day. And that we get in our fruit. Now, artificial sweeteners actually increases our cravings because artificial sweeteners is fake sugar. So when you actually put it in your body, it makes you crave sugar. Um, it actually makes us gain weight and it causes diabetes. And sugar has so many hidden names like aspartame, sucralose, malitol, xylitol. Basically, anything that ends with an O-L, all, it is probably sugar. And that's why the rule of thumb is if you can't read it, just don't eat it because it's more than likely sugar or a chemical that your body does not know how to handle. You know, the other categories is sodas and energy drinks and juice juices. Um, just realize the average 20 ounce soda has 15 teaspoons of sugar. Would you put that much sugar in your coffee or in your tea? And juices are nothing but liquid sugar. You guys, Soda, for example, is a combination of acid, sugar, caffeine, and food coloring. That's what you're actually putting in your body, in your children's body, in your family's body. Would you give soda to your dog? No, because you know it would hurt their bodies. All of the crap that we mention here increases something called insulin resistance, where your cells become numb to the effects of insulin and what it does is it requires more and more and more insulin to keep your blood sugar normal. This is the cause of all the age-related chronic, chronic diseases, heart disease, high blood pressure, cancer, diabetes, dementia, etc.
Uh, fast food is another one that we're labeling as crap foods. It, you guys, it's not real food. Watch a movie, Supersize Me. It's literally poison in your body. Um, refined oils, canola oil, vegetable oil, trans fats. Um, next to high fructose corn syrup, trans fats are the most deadly ingredients in our food supply. There is no safe limit. There is no reason to ever eat them. It's made in a factory, and it's made to increase the shelf life of food. You know, that's how they can get cookies to stay on the shelf for months. But, yeah, it increases the shelf life of food, but it shortens the lifespan of the human, of us. It causes cancer and dementia and diabetes and increased inflammation. And table salt is stripped of all minerals. It's unhealthy. It's processed. There's no reason we should have table salt. There are so many better alternatives, like Himalayan sea salt. Refined white grains like breads, rice, pasta, they have no nutritional value. They're highly processed, and they're made mostly of sugar, which actually leave us more hungry. So a lot of these white grains that we're eating, like breads and pasta, they literally leave us more hungry. They do not satisfy us. It's like taking a pill that increases your appetite. Um, so that's our crap foods. And the objective is to, to try to eliminate most crap foods. Now, we're human. Okay, we're not going to be perfect and that's okay, but can we try to eliminate that and replace it? What do we replace it with? A okay option is what we're calling the okay foods. These are foods that we're labeling as not the best. They typically uh, tend to be convenient. They're easy. They're inexpensive, but if they're eaten alone, they wouldn't be healthy. So these are foods that we're really going to encourage that you do a little bit, moderation. Okay, they're typically, and the OK, by the way, stands for, the O is ordinary. The K is knockoffs of real food. So it's not real food, typically. Uh, the A is adequate, but not optimal. So it's OK, but it's not the best. And the Y is yield subpar health if fed exclusively. So if it's the only foods that we're eating are OK foods, which a lot of Americans are typically eating OK foods thinking they're eating healthy. And then the crab foods, knowing they're eating bad, but saying, ah, it's fine. It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> the okay foods, they yield up our health if fed exclusively. We will never be truly healthy if we only eat okay foods. So what are we labeling as okay? Coffee. Now, caffeine increases the stress hormones, blood pressure, heart rate. Heart rate, insulin, it's addictive. So when you stop it, it causes a headache, uh, can cause dehydration. But... At the same time, if you enjoy a cup of coffee in the morning, enjoy it, but don't load it with a bunch of crap foods. Don't load it with sugar. Don't load it with chemicals, okay? Honey or pure maple syrup, um, you know, natural sugars, I guess. What I want you to know is these are okay, okay? So we don't want to load up on those things. These are still forms of sugar. And again, our body cannot handle more than six to nine teaspoons of sugar per day, including fruit. So sugar is sugar. It's okay as an occasional treat, use it sparingly, but it shouldn't be loaded in our foods. Stevia, read the label carefully. Uh, manufacturers have found a way to take this plant and make it a refined food substance. Again, it's okay every now and then to sweeten something, but don't go crazy here and think you're being healthy. Dairy and meats, Americans have been taught that we need milk. We've been taught that milk is nature's perfect food, and it is for a calf. In fact, Guys, humans are the only species that drink milk after weaning. And whether you realize this or not, more than 75% of the world is lactose intolerant, meaning they're not able to digest the sugar in milk. And what that does is it causes bloating, gas, diarrhea, sinus problems, asthma. Now, for right now, we're calling it okay. Next week, we're going to take a dairy holiday and just see how you feel um, and just see if you are lactose intolerant. Um, but right now let's do it sparingly. Let's try to not do it in excess. Let's not do it for every meal. As far as the meats, our meats are loaded with hormones. Our animals are mistreated, they're malnutrition, and they're fed processed garbage, and they are killed inhumanely. And we take all of that energy and all of that garbage that they are fed and we ingest it in our bodies. And our bodies, it takes so long for our bodies to digest the meats alone let alone all the chemicals and all the garbage within that meat. And the way that those animals are killed, you can't tell me that the energy of that that we're putting into our body is not affecting our moods and our anger and our fear and a lot of our issues. Um,
our meats is not like it used to be on the farm 40, 50 years ago. It is, it, it's turned into a business and it's literally killing us as a society. So again, for right now, we're labeling it as okay, but moderation and be very selective with your meat sources. If you can find a local farm, local is best. Grass fed is best. Okay. Um, that, that, that is the way to eat it. You know, a lot of them are, are labeled um, vegetarian chickens or um, that, that's not good because they're feeding them corn. And corn is a huge issue in the United States. So grass-fed, um, beef, okay, local, okay, um, is, is, is what you want to do. And then alcohol, again, moderately, it's okay. You know, one to two glasses of red wine or really high-quality beer. But in doses of more than one or two glasses, it becomes poison. It has high calories and sugar. It damages our gut lining. It damages our liver. It increases our blood sugar and insulin. It causes inflammation. It disrupts our hormones. Um, there are so many um, negatives to alcohol. So again, if you want to enjoy it here and there, that's fine. Um, but moderation. And then restaurant food. It's okay. It's nice to eat out. But the bottom line is we don't know what's in our restaurant food. We don't know how much processed stuff is in there, how much sugar is in there. And I can guarantee you almost every single thing that you eat, including your salad dressing. And, you know, you order a salad trying to be good. It's loaded with sugar. It's loaded with corn. It's loaded with chemicals. It's loaded with crap foods. It's laced with chemicals. Now, what we're really going to encourage you to do is switch to power foods, okay? Power foods are complete and whole. They're able to heal. They're free of toxins. They're packed with antioxidants and vitamins and minerals, and they are healing foods. They build the brain. So the power stands for protective. P is protective. The O is optimal nutrition. Um, so protective, it protects our bodies. Optimal nutrition, it's the best nutrition. Wisdom of the ancients, um, meaning ancients have used this for hundreds of thousands of years. Um, enriching, it enriches our body, it enriches our, our health, and it's regenerating. So what is under that category? I'm going to label these pretty quickly, and Maddie could probably go through a little bit more detail here. Uh, but organic local veggies, to me, it's just common sense why we'd want to eat it. When they're in season, it's typically what our bodies need um, in our environment. They will literally heal the bodies from the inside out. Berries and fruit, uh, berries especially, um, probiotic-rich foods are so good for our gut, like kefir cheese or kefir milk. And I would encourage that you make your own versus buy the the stuff in stores. It's really easy to make. Uh, kombucha, which is fermented tea, um, and we'll give you a list of a few others. Sea salt, again, um, Himalayan sea salt literally heals the body. Uh, Celtic salt is what I would recommend. Healthy oils, you know it's healthy if it's organic, virgin, and cold pressed. Organic, virgin, and cold cold pressed. Uh, coconut oil, grapeseed oil, um, and then whole grains. But but I really encourage that the whole grains are properly prepared, meaning they need to be soaked for over seven hours with apple cider vinegar, um, something that's going to help them um, digest easier before we cook them. And I'll send you a video on how to prepare your grains. Nuts and seeds, I also recommend soaking those. Um, and don't overdo those, okay? Just because they're power foods doesn't mean we should load our bodies with them. We're already getting too much of them with our nut butters, and then we're getting, you know, um, almond milk, and we're just consuming more nuts than our bodies really can digest. So it's a good food. It's a healthy food. It's a healing food. But again, be selective with the quality and don't overdo it. Beans and legumes, again, if prepared properly, great. And again, I will send you a video. I'll post a video on, on how to properly prepare your grains. And then water. Water is beautiful, healthy. Our body needs water to function at its highest potential. So the biggest focus with food and what we feed ourselves is just mindfulness uh, with what we feed our body. Okay, I want you to pay attention and we're going to track, you know, what crap foods did I eat today? What okay foods did I eat today? And what power foods did I eat today? And the goal is to limit that, that crap list and maximize that power list and really celebrate that. So it is time to ditch the crap or rather swap it with some really incredible power foods. So 
We don't like to really promote good foods or bad foods, more appropriate or inappropriate. This week is really, really about progress, not perfection, but it's also about learning. Okay, I just, we just fed you so many facts. Your job is to go out and use them and make conscious decisions with all this information that you're given. Um, Which brings me to my next topic, power foods. Okay, I love power foods, they get me excited. Um, And basically how I go about my day, guys, is I just think, how can I get the most amount of power foods into every single meal as possible. And every day is different because sometimes I'm really busy and it's a lot harder and sometimes I'm at home and I'm in a great cooking mood and I'm throwing them all in. So, power foods. I wanna bring up specifically an element of power foods and that is phytonutrients. These are basically the antioxidants that you've probably heard talked about on the news or you read in an article. You've probably heard of like beta carotene and carrots, cancer fighting, or um, there's one called bioflavonoids. These are found in berries. They're really good for fight against cancer. Okay, stuff like this. You've probably heard of those. That's what I'm talking about. And phytonutrients are essentially the colors that make fruits and vegetables colorful. Okay, so eating colors fights cancer. Okay, real colors, not artificial colors. Um, There are over 2,000 different plant pigments presently known, and they're found in basically all plants. And here's what's really cool. Phytonutrients, I I can't say all of them, but a lot of the, some that I I know a lot about, specifically the ones found in berries, those phytonutrients that nobody likes to talk about, 50 times the power of vitamin C and vitamin E as far as um, being antioxidants and fighting and working for your immune system. 50 times more powerful. That's why eating the food and not taking the supplement is so important. Okay? So, Uh, This is the thing that's missing in modern nutrition. Uh, We're missing that subtle power found in in, in food and phytonutrients. We're so consumed thinking about fats and carbs and and protein and calories. We're missing the things that actually make a difference in how we feel. Um, The things that heal our bodies. They move out the free radicals. They get rid of the pollutants that we breathe and that touch our skin, they restore our cells, cell by cell, teaching them all how to to act the way they were intended to act. They can regenerate our skin. They are truly the incredible thing. Um, Again, they give us the power to heal. And once you finally start receiving all the nutrients and phytonutrients that your body wants and needs and craves, a lot of those cravings that you're fighting right now go away. I always tell people I don't really have food cravings and I really believe that it's because I fill my life with so many power foods. Um, I don't nutrients. Where do you find them? You're gonna find them in fruits, okay? Berries are especially great just because they're low um, they don't enter, the sugars don't enter your blood your bloodstream as quickly. Um, But fruit are great. You're not gonna be unhealthy because you're eating too much fruit. I don't believe that. Um, Vegetables, yes, we've emphasized the green vegetables, but don't be afraid to taste the rainbow. There's beautiful things for every color and every vegetable out there. Um, I find that I'm inspired to try new things just because they look so beautiful in the store. Grains, believe it or not, uh, they come in more than just brown color. Uh, Beans and legumes, you can get red or green lentils, black beans, black eyed peas. It's said that foods that are black have the presence of all the different colors. You're getting jam packed with those phytonutrients. Um, Nuts and seeds, just think of the beautiful color of pistachios, teas, 
herbal teas are just loaded with tons of different herbs and they have all the different colors even if your tea is only ever looks brown it's coming from lots of different color sources and lots of different phytonutrients and then there's spices i think of the rich color of turmeric or saffron and just how beautiful that is and that that's loaded with phytonutrients um herbs i love cilantro and it makes a dish look that much more fresh. Um, a purple head of garlic, think about the different nutrients found in that. Uh, sea salt, you can buy gray sea salt, you can buy pink Himalayan sea salt, I think there's even a blue sea salt. Um, but experiment and really see how you can add these colors to your life and add these power foods to your life. Um, even if you're indulging in some crap food, okay, I sprinkle power food on the crap food to make me feel better. And then something really beautiful happens with the, the self-talk that you're also giving yourself. Because you know that you're doing something good for yourself while also doing something bad for yourself. Um, again, it teaches us to be nice and gentle. Uh, chia seeds are really great food to sprinkle here and there. Um, they don't have a lot of flavor. You can't really tell they're there, but they are loaded with some good stuff probably realizing you're gonna have to cook. I can't really sugarcoat this. You are going to have to cook. If you want a healthy body, unless you can hire a personal chef, which I envy you dearly, um, you are, you, you have to learn how to cook. You have to connect with your food. You have to connect with your food. Um, cooking is imperative. Now it doesn't mean it has to be burdensome. It doesn't mean you need to cook dinner every single night. That's my number one rule of thumb for cooking is cook once, eat two, three, four, five times. Um, I wanna cook as much as I can, as long as it will last, so I don't have to do as much work dur during the week, okay? The other thing is the food prep. As soon as you bring your groceries home, is going to make you utilize your food a lot more efficiently, okay? Um, and here's what I'll say about cooking. If you have time to go out to eat, you have time to cook. And I would also say that if you're making time to spend an hour at the gym several days a week, you have time to cook. Because that food you're eating is way more important than one of those days of exercise at a gym. I am telling you, the food you are eating is so powerful. Let's load up on some power foods, cut out the crap, and work on getting out of okay. Um, now, the other thing that we're really focused on swapping is mentally. What we feed our mind is equally as important as what we feed our body. And right now, what I know is we are typically feeding our body a lot of the negative things. We're saying things like, I am not enough, or I am too much, or I am unlovable, or I'm fat, or ooh, I hate my face. Or, and we tend to focus on the areas that we don't like about ourselves, and we like dwell on them, and we tell ourselves how we don't like them. We tend to notice our worst flaws. And what we focus on is typically what we attract. And it doesn't serve us in any way. Think about it. If you tell a little kid over and over and over and over again their entire life how bad they are, and you're constantly pointing out their flaws, what will the result be? Do you think they'll be confident? Do you think they'll be happy? Do you think they'll be healthy? Think about what you say to yourself on a day-to-day -day basis when you look in the mirror. If you were to actually... If a friend of yours actually said those things to you over and over and over and over again, would you actually be friends with them? So we're going to switch some of that negative self-talk. And we're going to replace it with self-love. We're going to replace it with positive affirmations. We're going to practice affirmations. And affirmations are so powerful. These are statements that we say about ourselves. Positive affirmations are so powerful because what you say about yourself, you start to believe. You start acting as if. So if you say, my favorite affirmation is, I am the beautiful daughter of the Almighty King. I am the beautiful daughter of the Almighty King. I think of myself as the beautiful daughter because that's what I am. And you start acting as if versus I'm fat or I'm chunky or 
Affirmations takes us out of the present moment and helps us see the big picture. It helps us shift our focus from our problem to the truth. It's kind of like changing the channel on the TV. You know, it, it shifts our attention. It shifts our brain from what's negative to what's positive. It's kind of like watching something on TV and going, uh, this doesn't serve me. Let me change it. Same thing in our mind. And we can literally do that with an affirmation. What you believe determines how you live. So if you're saying something to yourself over and over and over again, that's how you live. That's how you show up. Now, biblical affirmations are the most powerful, meaning when it is something that is backed up by, by a Bible verse, it is so powerful because it is truth. And I, I believe that the Bible is truth. It is God's inspired word. And I believe it is my manual to how to live life, a happy, abundant, joyful, healthy, well life. How to be a great mom, how to be a great wife, friend, daughter, sister, all of it business person, all of it, I get from that Bible because it's true. Proclaiming truth and proclaiming God's word as an affirmation is one of the most powerful things you can do every day. And we're going to give you a list of things to choose from, of, of affirmations to choose from, or you can create your own. If you don't like any of them, you can create your own. Things on our list are um, things like, I'm a child of the one and only God. I'm a child of the one and only God. Think if you said that to yourself over and over and over and over again. Or another one, as I give generously, I receive generously. As I give generously, I receive generously. Think what would happen in your life if you said that to yourself over and over again. Another one, God has a good and perfect plan for my life. What if you said that in the mirror 10 times a day? Or while you were driving? Or while you're at work, God has a good and perfect plan for my life. What if you wrote that everywhere and put it on your computer and put it in your purse and put it on your phone and put it everywhere? God has a good and perfect plan for my life. And we'll give you a list so you can pick what you like. And repetition is the key here, okay? So we're going to have you do an affirmation every morning. But please, don't just write it once and forget about it. Like That's your affirmation. Repeat it over and over and over again. The other thing we're going to focus on feeding our minds, affirmation is one. The other is gratitude, okay? And we're going to try to replace some of the negative talk with gratitude, some of the complaining with appreciating, um, thanksgiving. And I know I am healthiest and happiest when I'm in gratitude, regardless of the circumstances around me, by the way. There could be all kinds of chaos going on around me, but I can still choose gratitude. Um, I love Philippians 4, 6. It says, in everything through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. You know, the Bible says, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Not when you're complaining, not when you're angry, with thanksgiving. And another one, 1 Chronicles 16, 8 simply says, give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. You know, I have one life to live. I want to do this one life well. Now, up to this point, you might not have, not have done it that well. And that's okay. The past is over. How long are you going to let that limit you? It doesn't matter. What matters is what are you going to do from this point forward? That's what matters. And I'll tell you, gratitude creates miracles. When I give thanks, it helps me live in the moment. And it slows down time because I have to notice. When I'm focused on gratitude, I have to actually stop and pay attention and notice and appreciate. Thanksgiving creates abundance. It creates peace. It creates joy. It creates wellness. And I'll tell you, I pay tribute to God when I pay attention enough to thank him because it forces me to see deeply. God is always blessing me, but sometimes I'm too busy to notice. Think about it. Think of when you work hard for your family to prepare a meal or to do something really nice for them. And they don't even notice. How does that feel? Think about all the ways God blesses us and how often we actually say thank you. And then think about when you do something for your family and they actually truly notice it and they notice the little things and they appreciate it. And they thank you sincerely and deeply. How amazing does that feel? 
I pay tribute to God when I pay attention enough to thank him for my blessings. Gratitude allows us to remember our blessings. It helps us uh, with avoiding what I call spiritual Alzheimer's. We have spiritual Alzheimer's in our, in our society. We forget really fast. We thank God and then by tomorrow we're complaining again. But, but with gratitude, it allows us to remember. And I will tell you guys, gratitude is not something that's taught. So a lot of people don't do it, but it's such a critical aspect and it's something that is learned. It's something that we can learn, we can teach ourselves, and we can teach to others. So our families need us to model it for them. Not the on-the-surface fake crap of gratitude. Not the pretend on the outside I act like I'm happy, but on the inside I'm complaining and I'm negative. That doesn't work because people around you know what you're thinking. It's the deep gratitude. It's the true gratitude. We can only feel one feeling at a time, one emotion at a time. So when you're in gratitude, you can't be angry or you can't be sad or you can't be whatever. And I will tell you, gratitude takes discipline. It doesn't happen naturally and we will never be perfect at it. I try to be in gratitude often and I fail every single day and that's okay. It's about progress, not perfection. And our challenge this week is 98 gratitudes this week, ladies. 98 gratitudes is what we're going to focus on this week. What does that mean? It means you are going to write seven gratitudes every morning and seven gratitudes every night. And I really want to challenge you throughout the week and throughout the day to be noticing, to be appreciating, to be in gratitude and to be mindful of our thoughts. So I know we just covered a lot of information, a lot of really good information. Some of it, some of it might have been review for you. Some of it might have been brand new. Um, and you might be feeling overwhelmed right now. You might be feeling like, what, where do I start? You might be feeling like, uh, what am I supposed to eat now? Uh, you might be feeling, uh, kind of like hopeless. And I just want to remind you that this program is about progress. Okay. It's not about changing everything overnight. It's about progress, not perfection. You will never be perfect. I am not perfect. I never will be perfect. Neither is Maddie. And we are just on this journey of health and wellness. But the bottom line is now you have the knowledge. Now you have um, the tools to make the right decisions. And now you're aware of why you might not be feeling as great as you um, want to be feeling. Or you might not look as great as you want to look. Um I also want to say that Maddie and I were crap eaters at one point. So uh, it takes time. It's not going to change overnight. And that's why we encourage that you pick one category. What is the one thing that stood out to you that was like, oh, this is my area? Was it pop? Was it sugar? Was it dairy? What was it for you? Figure that out and start there. And just start replacing that with something else. Um, and another thing you could do is if nothing jumped out at you, maybe you could food log for a couple days and just see what stands out to you. Then you can make some mindful decisions to swap uh, when, whenever you're finding that you're in excess in any way. When you're looking for swaps this week, when you're addressing your biggest cravings, we want you to ask yourself, what is it about this food that I'm craving? Okay. So is it crunchy? Is it salty? Is it chocolate? Is it creamy? Is it finger food? Is it something I can dip? Is it hot? Is it cold? Is it sweet? What is it about this food that I want? Because it's much easier to find a swap based on the quality of the craving rather than the craving itself. So really pay attention to that. Again, guys, this week is about mindfulness. It's about being aware of what is working, what is not working, what is triggering you, what are you craving for. We're trying to learn you. We're trying to learn ourselves so we can best take care of ourselves. Uh, for instance, Maddie craves creamy foods often. Now, this used to be ice cream or mac and cheese or fettuccine alfredo. Uh, well, there's an incredible recipe from last week called the 15-minute avocado pasta. 
And this is just as good as any fettuccine Alfredo. She makes this and doesn't feel like she's depriving herself of what she really wants, but rather feels great because this is actually good for her and it satisfies her. And that is what finding a successful swap looks like. For me, it's sugar. I love sugar. I used to be a the biggest sugar addict. Um, I'm proud to say that I am no longer a sugar addict. Sugar no longer controls me. I no longer need sugar to feel satisfied. But I knew I needed that sweet stuff. So what do I replace it with? Sweet potatoes are magnificent. Um, I found this tea. It's called Good Earth. It's caffeine free and it does not need any kind of a sweetener. And it just naturally has that sweet taste to it that totally uh, makes me feel fantastic. Um, but I, now I no longer feel deprived. And that is what a healthy swap looks like. Um, now, Mighty has created a really good resource for you to swap your crap or okay cravings. So try these recipes. There's even one for ice cream, by the way. The other thing I want to talk about is we talked a lot about what we feed our bodies and what we feed our minds. And I want you to realize that you're going to make some mistakes this week. You're going to eat some crap foods. And now that you're aware, you're going to feel even more guilty. But that positive self-talk is going to be so important. The forgiveness of, you know what? It's okay. I'm human. And yes, I ate a piece of chocolate right now, but that doesn't mean that I have to quit on the day and say I'll start over tomorrow and eat junk for the rest of the day and shame myself and make myself feel like a piece of garbage because that is not truth. The truth is I am a child of God. The truth is I am a human and I make mistakes and that is okay. That is how I am designed. And the truth is the next choice can be a healthy one. And that's where you can use some positive affirmations there to feed yourself so you continue to make good choices versus fall into the trap of self-defeating talk, the negative self-talk, and a downward spiral that a lot of us tend to do. Um, now, what I want to do is I want to cover the log with you guys for this week in a little bit of detail just so you know exactly what you need to do this week. Uh, Maddie does such an incredible job putting these together. You guys, we are so incredibly lucky to have her. We're going to have one sheet per day, okay? You can tell mine is filled out from the morning and I haven't done my evening one yet. And uh, I love them. I love these sheets. Um, and every morning, we're going to encourage you to fill this out. Okay, there's a section that's called morning intentions. And in the morning intentions, you're going to go through positive affirmation. And we're going to give you a list of affirmations, of positive affirmations. And I will tell you, every single one of them has at least a reference to a Bible verse, um, which is kind of cool. You could look those up if you wanted to. And, you know, it says things like, I am crowned with love and compassion. Imagine starting your day, writing that down. I am crowned with love and compassion. Again, don't just write it once and forget about it. Repeat it over and over again. Put it up everywhere. Remind yourself of it. Text yourself. Put a reminder on your phone. Whatever you need to so you don't forget it. And then the next thing we're going to ask you to do is write down seven gratitudes. And remember, no repeats, okay? So if you wrote a gratitude yesterday, you can't write the same one again today or tomorrow. The objective is to come up with 98 gratitudes this week and to really start to notice and how you are so blessed and just not take so much for granted. Um, and then you want to go through goals for today. Um, so any goals that you might have for today that you want to accomplish, you want to go ahead and write them down there. And the objective there is to simplify. Okay, a lot of times we try to do too much in a day. And I really want to encourage you to think about what is really important today. Okay, so nothing else matters. I don't need to overwhelm myself with a bunch of stuff that is unrealistic. Um, and then how did I sleep last night? Hours and quality. We want to continue to keep track of that. We want to continue to be mindful of our, of our sleep. And then the food log, you can log it throughout the day or you can... Do it at the end of the day, however you want to do it. I usually just do it at the end of the day. And it's split up. So we have a category for crap. So what crap foods did I eat today? We want you to think about that and go, okay, I, I did. I had pop. I had sugar. I had whatever, okay? What okay foods did I have today? Okay, what would be labeled as, yeah, it isn't the best food in the world, but it's not the worst either. Um, it's okay. 
And then what power foods did I have today? Um, and then we'll have a category that says other. This is stuff that you're not sure where it fits. I don't know if it fits in crap, okay, or power. I'm not sure. I need more education there maybe. Um, so we want to put that in there. But we want you to log everything that you eat throughout a day. And then cravings. I want you to write that down. What did I crave today? Oh, gosh, I was craving chocolate. And what is it about it that made you crave it? Okay, so let's pay attention there and write that down. And then we have a repeat of week one. Um, so greens, did I have it for one meal, two meal, or three meals? Bowel movement, pain or discomfort. Water, how much water did I drink? And again, five glasses, so 40 ounces. Did I do level two, which is half my body weight in ounces? Or did I do level three, which is level two plus a hot lemon water in the morning? And then self-care. Did I do one act, two act, or three acts of self-care? Try to rotate them. Try to do some different stuff so you can um, add some tools to your toolbox of self-care. And again, I really encourage that spiritual time every single day. That is the core, uh, ladies. And then evening reflections, okay? So at the end of the night, you can stop and go, okay, what are my successes for today? What do I want to celebrate? We really want to get you in the habit of taking time to celebrate, to give yourself credit, to say, I love me. I'm proud of me. I'm doing good. Um, so we want you to do that, okay? Um, areas of opportunity. Um, so, okay, what can I learn from today? Not so you beat yourself up about it, okay? But we want to learn. We want to improve. Seven gratitudes, so go ahead and write down what are my gratitudes. Again, no repeats. Loving thought before bed. A lot of times I write down a Bible verse and I kind of meditate on that. Um, or just a word, like a simple word, like peace um, or love. And I just really try to think about it. And then any other thoughts, feelings, or intuitions, anything else that you want to record. Uh, you want to update this every single day, okay? Again, we are not going to be perfect. We're not asking you to be perfect, but we are asking you to try. We are asking you to give it your best. We are asking you to invest in yourself and to be part of this community that is committed to wellness. And we are asking you to be gentle and kind. We are asking you to take it one day at a time, one day at a time, and just keep improving. And we are asking you to make healthy choices in what you feed your mind and what you feed your body. Where you are right now is perfect. You are perfect just the way you are. You don't need to do anything else. You're choosing to do something else. And I can't wait to talk to you on our coaching call.